I think Star Wars is such a part of people's lives and it's something that they just see now on a regular basis that when you say George Lucas and he created it, I don't think people give enough full value to what that means. I like to think I do, but I worked with him. I've seen the person that uh, comes up with the lines and the dialogue and understands Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker in a very deep level because those characters are a part of him. And, and for my part, joining Lucasfilm, I always respected that. I felt privileged to be a part of telling the story. I felt grateful that I got to do it with George. There are such universal themes in, in the Star Wars stories, and ironically, I think people feel that despite being science fiction, it reflects the world we actually live in, in its inclusiveness and diversity and conflict and themes of good against evil. And so it's, it's fascinating to experience that as a child, you know, to have your imagination so enriched by, by, by these stories, and then now as an adult to look back and, 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 and rekindle my relationship to Star Wars, um, and in particular those Star Wars movies, and the tone of this series, which I find is a little bit more Empire Strikes Back and grittier and edgier uh, Star Wars. Star Wars is a big influence on me, because it, it came out in 77, I was born in 66, so I was right at the right age for that thing to hit. I remember seeing like a picture in the newspaper it was after it was out already, and it was like, this looks pretty cool. And I went to see it, then it was just like, pinned my ears back, just looking at that thing, and I was just mouth agape. The Mandalorian, whose name is Din Djarin, um, is your iconically cool, flawed, mysterious, lone, you know, loner, gunslinger um, that harkens to the you know, best of the samurai movies and the westerns. My character, he's, in my opinion, a businessman. He is looking to get a particular product for the highest bidder. And this businessman supplies basically those people who will go out and hunt down whatever his clients are looking for. And so Grief hires the Mandalorian to go out and bring back a bounty. And the the bounty is worth quite a bit more than even Grief knew in the beginning. The show to me in the most basic storyline is about a man who's been following um, a way of life and has that way of life sort of upended 